The deal. There's something that seems like a quiet deal between us and our Lord Jesus. He is representing us before the Father. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Obviously, Jesus did not stop at dying on the cross and bringing us into God's family through his blood. He is representing us in heaven, pleading our case before the Father. As Jesus represents our interest in heaven, we are expected to do the same for him here on earth. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. One of the things Jesus wants us to do for Him is to preach the gospel to lost souls, not just with our words, but, but by behaving like Him. Romans chapter 13 verse 14 But be like the Lord Jesus Christ, so that when people see what you do, they will see Christ. Don't think about how to satisfy the desires of your sinful self. Jesus also wants us to visit on his behalf his brethren who are in affliction. We are to pray for them and help them in any other way we can. Jesus expects us to be his hands, feet, and mouth. We are to serve him with the gifts and talents he has given to us. We see that there is a quiet deal between us and our Savior. We all want Jesus to represent our interests before the Father. In fact, because we are naturally selfish, each of us wants his or her case to be of the greatest importance to the Lord Jesus. If possible, we want our case file to be the only one Jesus is holding before the Father every moment. But then, how well are we holding our own end of the deal? Are we honestly representing the person and interest of our Lord Jesus to the best of the ability he has given to us? Do we think pure thoughts like Jesus does, or are our thoughts stained with immorality, wickedness, evil desires and wishes towards others, hatred, envy, and so on? What about the words that proceed out of our mouth? Are they pure words like the words of our Lord? Since the mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart, do the things that fill our hearts and the resultant words satisfy the requirement in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8? How involved are we in evangelism? Do we prayerfully and consciously look out for daily opportunities to present our Savior to the people we come in contact with? Or do we just mind our busy lives and care nothing for the lost souls he brings our way and for whom his heart yearns and aches so badly? How much do we care for the least of his brethren, the poor, sick, lonely, discouraged, and the suffering? How about our persecuted brethren and missionaries in remote places who sometimes go to bed on an empty stomach after trekking several miles preaching the gospel of Jesus and following up with new converts? Now, whether we hold our own side of the bargain or not, Jesus remains faithful. Romans chapter 9, verses 15 and 16. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we are not faithful, he will still be faithful. Christ cannot deny who he is. Jesus, because of the kind-hearted, gracious, merciful, loving shepherd he is, will not fail to plead on our behalf with our Heavenly Father. But if you are not committed to your side of the bargain between you and Jesus, how are you able to sleep at night, knowing that you are receiving so much from a business partner who is faithfully committed to the deal between you two, while he gets little or nothing in return? How are you able to comfortably enjoy the blessings that come from his incessant representation of your interest before the Father when you know that you are not making any conscious efforts to fulfill his expectation of you? How are you able to take such a loving helper for granted? Even if the Lord keeps pouring his attention and blessings upon us in spite of our deliberate negligence of his will, 
Let us remember that a day is coming in which he will judge and reward us for our faithfulness or lack of it. May the Lord give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen.